I tapped on my best friend's crotch area while he was asleep. Hello there. Thank you for taking the time to read. I'm 17. F. Here and I want to get off my chest how I possibly ruined my entire life in a matter of seconds. I'm going to get straight to the point of what I did here then explain. I tapped on my best friend's crotch area twice with my finger while he was asleep. Now I want to get to why I ever did that and the overall circumstances. My nearly entire early teen life, I have suffered from mental illness such as depression and I know as of the beginning of the year, I've often felt empty like having no happiness, no sadness, no motivation, etc. Around 2 months ago now, my best friend, Mark, and I had a sleepover at his house. We were having a pretty good time, until around very early in the morning he fell asleep. At first, I decided to just go to sleep as well, since it would be boring without him up. So I settled down, and tried falling asleep for about 20 minutes. I couldn't, it was too uncomfortable sharing his bed, along with it being extremely humid. I just decided to stay awake for a while, while being on my phone, so I could get tired, and fall asleep easier. Then, I saw Mark turn in his sleep with him somehow taking off his entire blanket off with he was turning. There I saw his area bulging, so I had sudden thought, maybe I should quickly tap on it, maybe it'll give me some excitement, some happiness or anything, I just wanted to feel alive. So I did, I stuck out my pointer finger and I tapped on his area twice very quickly and lightly. There in that immediate moment, I suddenly thought what the hell am I doing? So I stopped, and fixed the blanket back over him. He doesn't know it happened, and the guilt, since then has been killing me to the point I can't even breathe, eat, play video games, watch TV, be with family, do anything comfortably. I keep telling myself what type of person does that disgusting stuff and I feel like I deserve to suffer immensely. So I have suffered. For the past 2 months, every second from the moment I wake up to the moment I fall asleep I think of my bad action. Sleep itself is the only thing I enjoy now. I have decided to confess what I did to him this Friday, another sleepover at the same place. I've always wanted to be the best person I could ever be. Treat others with kindness no matter what, always be open to anything, and just make the world a better place. And honestly, I was pretty proud of myself, in succeeding in those ambitions, of course until what I did to Mark. But, with this action I feel like I've done the exact opposite, so I deserve to suffer. And I've accepted, yet I'm extremely panicked of any possible punishments. I'm scared it will damage any and all of my relationships. I'm scared of making others suffer with what I did. I'm scared that for the rest of my life, that will be the only thing I'm known for, and ruin all my possible chances of ever being happy. I'm scared people might think I did worse. I'm just scared to hurt anybody. Thank you for reading my story, I will update this after I confess. May you all have, have happy lives and I'm sorry for just being possibly just another terrible person. I knowingly stuck a budget to my boss's hand and let a customer get blamed for it. A few years ago, I was a salesman for a tool company, and as I'm sure you all know salespeople shake hands all the time when closing a deal. So one day on my lunch break I was sitting in my car eating my salad, and for some reason I felt like a hard dried snot stuck in my nostril. So obviously I didn't think anybody was around, or watching me so I went, and dug for gold. Well as soon as I pulled the giant flaky budger with a snail trail of slime on it, my boss who just got back from vacation, and bops the hood of my car and reaches in for a handshake. I kind of panicked and just shook his hand. We talked for a few about his vacation, and then he saw somebody walk into the showroom, so he went in the building. I finished up lunch and headed back into work. I punch back in, and I just hear from the showroom what the f asterisk asterisk asterisk, and then I hear gagging and coughing. My boss is holding his hand away, like it's a dirty diaper, 
he's dry heaving, and he says that guy just whipped a refine budger on me, and I look across the room, and see this old guy standing there in total disbelief, and he let my boss have it. He's telling my boss he's never coming back, told him to stop picking his nose like a window licker and a few other colorful sentences. My boss kicks him out. While this whole thing is going down, all I can think to myself is holy sh asterisk t, I got away with it. I just drove by my old work, and thought about that time, and figured it was time to confess. I have become a serial shoplifter, and I have no clue how to stop, or even where to go next. I don't really know when it all started, but my best guess, is a few months ago, when I stole a foundation from Ulta while stealing the first time. I was so scared, and so cautious, that it was like a game to me, seeing just how much I could get away with. After that, I began to go downhill, especially after realizing how easy it was to steal, and not get, caught in my area. For example, I have stolen in one tome around $50 worth of makeup from Walmart, walked away fine, and came back to the store two days later with no problems. At this point, I don't know what to do with myself. I go to counseling, for what is most likely bipolar second disorder that's undiagnosed, but my therapist has no idea about this problem, that could probably be called kleptomania at this point. I don't want to tell her, because I don't want my parents to know, but at the same time I know that, if I keep doing this, I'll eventually get caught, and my life will be over. I honestly don't even have good reason to steal. I come from a middle class family, have everything I need, and have loving parents who would be horrified to find out I do this. I'm salutatorian of my class, captain of the mock trial team, and a regular volunteer with my town's yes program. I don't even know where to turn, but no matter what I do I can't stop. That is my confession. I just donated blood and I have an active Lyme's infection. I needed a cover test and I don't have insurance they test for antibodies for free. Lyme's wasn't on chart of questions, but I bet it's probably a disqualification. We'll see if they find out. Until then free cookies for me. Me and my friend took her grandma to a drug deal and stole alcohol from Walmart. So when I was 13 I went to the mall with my two friends, and one of their boyfriends. Friend 1 was the one with a boyfriend and friend 2 was the one whose grandma was driving. Me and friend 2 indulged, in smoking and drinking a lot at the time, very bad do not recommend. And she was going through her story on the way back, and saw that someone around the area we were in was selling edibles. She was like we should get some, and I was like yeah totally. So we planned to meet at a grocery store near us, and told her grandma, that we wanted to get some of those little jello fruit things, that were trending on TikTok, and that we thought, that they were selling them at this grocery store. Then something happened I don't remember, and the dealer wasn't coming, so friend to agreed to go over to his house, and pick it up. She told her grandma, that she wanted to see one of her cousins, that lived in the neighborhood behind the grocery store and she argued a bit but agreed. So we didn't have enough money, so friend one agreed to give it to us, if we paid her back, even though she didn't like us doing stuff like this. So the grandma got there and me, and friend two got out, and the dealer told us to come around the house and we gave him the money, and got the edibles. We went back in the car and the grandma didn't suspect anything. I opened the edibles in the back, and it smelled so potent and the grandma was saying, how it smelled musty in here friend 2 got really mad at me, but the grandma didn't really notice the smell. I ate one, and so did friend 2. We decided to go to the movies, but the next showing of the movie we wanted to see, didn't start till later, so we wanted to go to the store before. When we got to the store we split the edibles, and were having fun. Then we went to the movie and friend 1 and her boyfriend we just making out the whole time so me, and friend 2 went to wait in the car. We got really bored, so we went back to the store, and stole some white wine in this metal bottle. We went back to the car and tried it, but didn't really like it, so we never really ended up drinking it. 
friend who ended up keeping it though, and a month later her grandma found it under her bed, and she said that we found it in the seat at the movies, and just kept it. At the end of the day the edibles were booty cheeks and a waste of money, and we didn't even end up getting anything out of it. Lord forgive me. I stole my dead sister's money. I stole my dead sister's money from a drawer in my dad's room. I was 11, when my eldest sister was killed in a traffic accident in front of me, and my middle sister. This came less than 2 years after my mother had died. I later found out my mother died by suicide. My dad had remarried and my stepmother was a mere 10 years older than me. Although we had started well, we no longer had a good relationship. Stealing money at home was my way of getting what I thought was rightfully mine. Me and my surviving sister were used as slave labor at home. We didn't receive an allowance or pocket money, yet were expected to do all the chores, and to the standard the queen would expect. Washing, ironing, cleaning both their cars, vacuuming, doing the dishes, etc. Other than make dinner for my dad, my stepmother didn't lift a finger around the house it seemed, and my dad certainly didn't. My sister stole food, I stole money. We were both beaten black and blue for it by our dad, but we still did it. One day while looking for money in my dad and stepmother's bedroom, I opened a drawer and inside was an envelope with my dead sister's name on it. It also said the envelope contained something like 23 pounds. It was from the hospital, and was part of the contents of her purse when she died. I knew it was wrong, but I thought what the hell. So I took a couple of pounds. Later, I took more, and more. Eventually, all the money was gone, yet I left the envelope in the drawer. Well, obviously the theft was discovered. I was beaten black and blue, and green and red and purple for it. As an adult, I guess I understand the anger that comes from that disrespect. However, I think I was probably only 12 years old by then. I'm now 47 years old. I don't care that I stole money from my dad all the time till I went into foster care aged 15. As a side note, when I went into foster care and ever since in my life, I have never stolen anything ever again. I just feel so ashamed of stealing that money. The money that had been in my dead sister's purse. I have donated money to charity many times over the years. I've also spent many years volunteering in a charity shop, and donated unwanted goods to them to sell. I don't know if I can really make up for the 23 pounds that had been in my dead sister's purse, no matter what I do. Practically, there's a side of me that does say the money should have been spent or donated to a charity at the time anyway. Is there any point in holding on to it? But, I'm haunted by it, more than 35 years later. I bit my child in anger. I can't believe I'm writing this on Reddit, but there is absolutely no one I can tell about this so here goes. My toddler has always hated going to sleep in the evenings. He fights sleep with all his might and would love to stay up until midnight, if he had his way. I'm a single parent and lately I've been feeling constantly on the verge of breakdown, due to stress. But recently I've at least succeeded in making him fall asleep before 9pm which is a huge improvement. But tonight I tried for over an hour to make him lay down and go to sleep. Nothing worked and we both got more and more agitated. Suddenly he launches himself on me and starts pinching and scratching my face and it's bloody painful. I should've cut his nails today but just couldn't find the energy for fighting about it so left it for tomorrow. For some stupid stupid reason my immediate reaction to this was to grab his hand and bite it. Not very hard, because I thankfully came to my senses quickly, but what the actual f asterisk ck, who in their right, mind bites a child. I feel like I've reached the lowest point ever in my life as a parent. Thank you for watching. Hit like and subscribe. For more videos.